guys and welcome back to the channel in today's video i am going to be sharing with you how you can convert your visitor's visa to a work permit i know this journey is not an easy one it's a 50 50 chance i just wanted to share on here some things that had worked for some people and how you can position yourself properly to convert your visitor's visa to a work permit before we get started i just want to say welcome and thank you guys for tuning in today uh, if you're new to my channel my name is Funkeshi and on here I share with you some immigration settlement and business opportunities that will help you thrive so if you are interested in topics like this please by all means subscribe to the channel my returning subscribers you guys are the real MVP thank you for sticking around with me guys don't forget to smash the like button just smash it and let me know where you're watching from feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and I will see you soon So this particular video is going to be segmented into four parts. I'm going to try as much as possible to keep it very brief. So the first aspect is, yes, there is a policy in place that supports foreign nationals that are currently in Canada or that have a valid job offer to work in Canada. This particular public policy has been extended by two years until the 28th of February 2025. This is fantastic news. I'm sure some of you are already conversant with this policy. So what this means is that you have enough time to process your visitor's visa application. In my previous video, I had shared some things that you need to be mindful of when putting in your visitor visa application. I'm just going to leave that video in the description box and in the end card of this video so you can watch it after now. So what this means is that while you are in Canada on a visitor's visa there's a policy in place that helps the foreign worker to change that visitor's visa to a work permit for those of you that are not very familiar with what this work permit entails i'm just going to break it down very quickly there are two types of work permits especially if you're looking to come to canada and work the first work permit is called the employer specific work permit this allows you to work in canada according to the conditions on the work permit yes when you hear a name employer specific you can be sure that there are conditions you know surrounding this particular work permit number one is that this particular work permit must bear the name of the specific employer the employer that has hired you to carry out work the employer specific work permit will also have the duration of how long you can carry out this work and thirdly at times it can be location specific it must also show where this work will be carried out from so before you apply for an employer specific work permit your employer must give you at least one copy of your employment contract and must give you either of these two documents copy of the lmia document that is the labor market impact assessment document and as some of you already know this is a document that is received from the government after you've been able to win the case of not getting anybody a Canadian a permanent resident anybody worthy to carry out that job in Canada except for a foreign worker this in particular is the responsibility of the employer to apply for the LMIA not the responsibility of the candidate in fact a few days ago one of my subscribers sent me a copy of um, a, a job offer that he recently got from someone who claims to be an agent an immigration agent and looking at the job offer in fact i'm going to do a video about that because the thing is a lot of people are getting scammed by the day when i looked through the job offer, i'm like what is this the employer in quotes is saying that the candidate needs to apply for an lmia how can the employee apply for an lmia in fact, I think I'm going to do a video so you guys can be on guard and should be able to identify when a job offer is fake, when something is not just right about the application process. On here is a DIY community. I just show you guys how you can do it yourself, but that is just by the way. The employer will give you number one or an offer of employment number. 
which and this is specifically giving workers lmi exempt workers so this is just to give you an overview of what this particular work permit is all about second on my list is the open work permit as the name states it is open meaning that you can work for any employer in canada except for one that is listed as an ineligible uh, employer that has failed to comply with the conditions of employment and other things and having an open work permit just gives you the liberty to work uh, in different organizations different occupations different employers and you are not restricted except for the conditions that is showing on the screen before you come into canada it's always important that you try to be prepared preparation in terms of if you know you have plans to stay back in canada or to take advantage of the public policy that favors foreign workers that are currently in canada have just landed a job offer or looking for a job so funke how can i change my visa visa to a work permit well what i've seen over time especially with a lot of people that have now neutralized in the country they arrived with the visa visa and now they are working in canada is number one first thing you need to know is that your visa visa only allows you to stay in canada for six months however this can be extended okay and this must be extended before the end of the six months so take for example you have applied for your visa and you were given a visa visa for three years four years five years it all depends on whatever has been given to you you are only allowed to stay part-time six months if for example you are in canada and you've been searching for a job and for some reason you haven't gotten any feedback from that employer you can go ahead to extend your visitors visa that will give you some time to you know apply for more jobs and hopefully you land one before your stay in canada elapses. so that is something you need to know for number two it's important that you prepare yourself okay and um if your intent okay is to stay back after what you're coming from it could be a conference it could be a visit and part venture you just say okay i like this place i think i want to stay back i think i want to learn a skill or whatever you can look at registering in a vocational institute or a college to do one or two courses you want to make sure that whatever vocational institute you choose or college you choose or university you choose is a distant learning institute what that means in a nutshell is that you will be qualified for a work permit immediately after your program and which is one of the goals you want to make sure you can still stay in canada even after studying in any of those institutions or colleges there are lots of colleges all around canada you can apply online or you can walk in and speak to the admission officer take it on from there to register make payments and that way you can convert that visitor's visa to a study permit okay so that will enable you to stay longer that way you can bring in your spouse to come on a work permit and then once you're done with your program you can apply for a work permit and that way you get to work for 20 hours per week it might not be so much in terms of the hours but i think it's very reasonable and considering that you are on a study permit so you should devote some more time to study just to strike a balance okay and to make sure that your grades are up the next is to get a job i know this can be very very difficult to we'll say the job market had really changed unlike what it used to be a year ago two years ago yes it was competitive but you can be like 80 percent sure that oh i've put together a fantastic resume a good cover letter and hopefully i should get a call back i should get called at least for an interview but nowadays I call it ghosting period because after putting in the application, you really don't know what's happening. You don't even know if your application has been seen by anybody and you start counting weeks and months and that's where you forget about the job. It's getting really difficult nowadays to land a job. However, there are still job opportunities. Employers are looking for candidates that can fill some positions. And this brings me to the point that I'm trying to establish in this 
point if you know what i mean if you're looking for jobs you need to take advantage of the rural areas or the atlantic provinces here in canada i had shared extensively about the aip the rnip programs and so on please just go and watch those videos the good thing is that employers in areas like that are always looking out for people that will carry out some jobs and the good thing is that it's not all jobs that requires an lmia a job that requires an lmia takes a toll on the employer putting together documentation and plus that the employer will have to pay a fee of one thousand canadian dollars for just a job posting for just a position all right that is a lot it is actually a lot but the flip side is that there are some lmi exempt jobs and this is what you need to focus more on these jobs that do not require an LMIA where you are exempt. Yes, it still involves paperwork, it still involves a fee, not as much as the employer paying a thousand Canadian dollars. The LMIA exempt application is done by the employer as well, but it costs really little compared to when it is the LMIA application itself. So try and look out for jobs that is LMIA exempt. Jobs like being a religious worker, there are also some trade jobs that may be considered as LMIA exempt. It all depends um, on the employer. So please try as much as possible to look for all of those trade jobs that you can do that is LMIA exempt. Also, if you happen to work with a multinational company back home and you are here on visitor and part venture, there is a job opportunity or you're going to be transferred, then the employer can also be given an LMIA exempt, which the employer will have to give you an offer of employment number. So that is what you're going to have because it's an LMIA exempt occupation. And so if you're able to get an LMIA exempt occupation, fantastic that will save you time and that will also give you opportunity to work in canada other tips that may help you uh, to land a job quicker is make sure you start networking from your home country try and make really good and strong connections with employers on social media platforms like linkedin that way you try and find employers that need your services and they are willing to apply for an lmia for you as a foreign worker for this last tip it enables you having the financial capacity so take for example you have a huge sum of money maybe you are an investor you have a huge sum of money that you're not using okay or that you can put towards this course you can actually register a business a type of business that has significant benefits to canada and emphasis on significant benefits if you can put together a very good business plan and you're able to register a business that plays a significant role in the economy of canada please by all means go ahead to do that but you won't be doing this alone you also need the help of a canadian so this will in turn help to facilitate your work permits as the business owner and this is the investment route or investor route in my previous video i'd share with you some recruitment agencies that are very active and you get to receive job postings more like every other day please endeavor to see that video that video is going to be very helpful to you uh, especially when you land in canada okay even if you are not here try and save that video and then if you're here in canada please endeavor to rush over to that video i'm just going to put it somewhere here click on it watch it and try and look out for jobs and we've come to the end of the video i wish you all the very best in your endeavors and i'll see you on my next one till then stay blessed and take care